Hello everyone, in this video we will be calculating the gravitational field due to a ring. So this is the situation, okay this is a ring, it has a radius R, capital R and it has a total mass M, capital M and we, we are going to find the gravitational field at a point on the axis of this ring. So this is the center. We draw the axis perpendicular to the plane of this ring and we locate a point. So let the distance be x, okay, with x is distance from the point, uh, let us call this point P, okay, to the center of this ring. Now we need to calculate the gravitational field in terms of x, r, m and other variables if necessary. So a technique will be to divide this ring into very small pieces okay having a very infinitesimal mass dm okay. So these dms this very small mass will create a field at this point okay so in this direction and the magnitude of this field will be g dm divided by r square this is your r and after we have calculated the field for uh, this small mass we are going to integrate all these contributions and then find the net field. Now before we even begin to write down these equations let us uh, use symmetry to simplify a problem. If you notice uh, let this field uh, let me call this field as G okay and let this let us say it makes an angle theta with this axis okay this is x and this is going to be R. Now you can resolve this G into two components into the horizontal component okay this one and the vertical component. So let me draw this this is your G okay this is your axis this is theta so this will be this component will be G cos theta okay and the vertical component will be G sin theta. Now you can do the simi a similar construction for a mass which is diametrically opposite to this dm. Okay, you can select a dm mass right here okay, and we will create a field. Okay, the magnitude will be the same because the distance will not change. It is r square in this case and it is r square in this case. Because r square uh, in this triangle you can see is a capital R square plus x square from the Pythagoras theorem. So the distance won't change, so the your uh, magnitude will be the same, and so will be your theta. Now you can again resolve this field. This is your what this is the, what the field looks like. Okay, and this will be again g cos theta and this will be again g sin theta but it will be downward. Now if you add these two fields okay you will find that uh, g cos theta these two fields since uh, they are in the same direction will add up okay but the g sin theta the vertical components will cancel each other out exactly because both of them have the same magnitude g sin theta and in the opposite directions. So what you are left with is a field that is completely along the x axis okay the axis of this ring. So we basically need to calculate g cos theta for each dm and then we will integrate. So let us calculate g 
and uh, since we know the field is going to be along the minus i cap direction i am neglecting all the vector signs okay we can add the vector sign later so the f this small field will be g dm by uh, the distance which is r square plus x square this distance r which is r square which is r square plus x square from the pythagoras theorem and we need uh, the cos component we need g cos theta so uh, g cos theta will be g cos theta divided by r square plus x square dm and if you want to calculate the magnitude of the field due to all these contributions all these dms we'll just integrate so you know, finally the net gravitational field will be integral of g cos theta by r square plus x square dm okay over all the masses so g is a constant gravitational constant x is a constant r is a constant okay and cos theta will also be a constant so for a given point this distance is fixed that's why x is constant so we can pull everything out of the integral okay g cos theta upon r square plus x square and we need to integrate all such small masses so dm this dm then add it with this dm this dm all of them so we add all these masses up and we'll get our capital m so we are left with gm cos theta upon r square plus x square now instead of leaving this in terms of theta we'll convert cos theta into r square plus x square into uh, some form of r square plus x square so we know that cos theta is really just your base divided by hypotenuse so in this triangle you can see the base is simply x this length is x divided by hypotenuse hypotenuse is this length which is root r square plus x square now you substitute cos theta in this equation and you are finally left with g being equal to g m cos theta x divided by r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2 so this is the magnitude of your gravitational field and this field points inward in the if this is your positive x direction it will be in the negative x direction it won't have any component in the y, y axis now let me let us quickly look at some special cases okay so this was your formula now what happens at x is equal to 0 uh, at x is equal to 0 uh, first let's put uh, x equal to 0 in this case so g times m times 0 divided by r square to the power 3 by 2 which is r cube so we have multiplying with the 0 uh, your g will be equal to 0 this is with this we get from our formula now what happens in let us look at it physically so at x is equal to 0 this point p will be at the center of the ring so this will be a point p and you can see easily that this point p will be attracted equally along all the directions okay this dm will attract point p in this direction and there will be a dm right here which will attract it equally in the opposite direction therefore the net field at the center will be zero and you can check this from a formula now what happens if uh, your x is extremely larger as compared to the radius okay so this is your radius x will be somewhere beyond the board it basically means that your point is very very far away from the ring itself 
let's see how what we can uh, do g will be equal to g m x upon uh, r square plus x square the 3 by 2 okay now i'm pulling out our r square from the denominator okay so we are left with g m x upon r square 1 plus x square upon r square okay and this entire thing to the power 3 by 2 now if x is extremely larger than r then x upon r will be a lot larger than 1 and x square upon r square will also be a lot larger than 1 will be even larger so we are basically neglecting this term 1 in comparison to x square upon r square so we'll just uh, remove 1 from this equation we'll get r square into x square upon r square to the power 3 by 2 so r square and r square cancels out we are left with x square to the power 3 by 2 which is just x cube and x divided by x cube will leave us with x square so we have gm upon x square and this is the formula for the gravitational field of a point mass okay so what we have seen is that if you are very very far away from the ring your this ring will behave like a point mass okay so if you are very close this will this is what a ring looks like but if you zoom out if you are very very far away then this ring starts to uh, reduce its size and will eventually become a point and it will also start to behave like a point at x is equal to infinity uh, if uh, this field will drop down to zero so that's all for today thanks for watching